Hello, my name is Ray Bowman. I've been involved in international trade for over 30 years. I'm a certified global business professional. I'm the director of the EDC Small Business Development Center. Uh, this is an SBA program that provides free business advising services to small and medium-sized companies. I'm the program chair for the Southern California District Export Council. We're a group of volunteers appointed by the U.S. Secretary of Commerce to promote U.S. exports. I'm also a professor at California Lutheran University as well as Santa Barbara City College, teaching subjects in international trade, supply chain logistics, trade finance, and import export. I also belong to a number of trade organizations, including the American Association of Exporters and Importers, as well as NASBITE, who not only developed and certifies the CGBP designation, but is also dedicated to international trade education for small and medium-sized businesses throughout the world. So in this lesson, we're going to give a quick overview of certain quality standards that are out there that affect international trade transactions. The first one I want to go over is AQL. AQL stands for Acceptable Quality Level. This standard is used by a lot of large importers, a lot of large retailers um, that are buying all kinds of different products across a big spect spectrum of, of product categories. And so what AQL is, is basically a statistical formula. So there's different types of AQLs. You might hear the word AQL 2.5, 4.0. So in other words, there's different AQL standards for different types of products. And these standards are based on statistics. In other words, they're based on random sampling of not an entire shipment, but a certain portion of those shipments. And based on those statistics, if you inspect a certain amount throughout, um, you know, throughout a shipment, in other words, the front middle of a container, front middle sides of, um, uh, of a palletized item, that statistically you can determine what the amount of defect will be in the entire shipment. So this is the type of standard inspection that's done throughout the world. So most inspections throughout the world are not 100% inspections, but based on statistical sampling. So it's really important to know uh, what your AQL is. And a lot of inspection companies can help you determine uh, what the AQL is that they're applying uh, to your particular uh, product. It's also uh, important to understand AQL because a lot of US importers will be distributors uh, for these large retailers that will heavily use these AQL standards. Um, and within AQL you usually have two levels of defect. You have those defects that are considered minor and acceptable. So uh, even though you don't want any defects, there is an acceptable amount that's okay um, within an AQL standard. But then you have things called critical defects. Critical defects are defects that might render uh, the product unusable. And it may be unusable from a safety standard, from a mechanical standard, um, from, a, uh, from a product certification standard. So there's all kinds of defects that are both critical. In other words, you can't have even one of these critical defects or acceptable defects, which, will, um, which you can allow a certain amount per sample size within an inspection. Now, only one part of the inspection spectrum is, is that AQL inspection. But it's equally important to inspect the supply chain. So a lot of damage occurs when goods are in transit. So you might have something coming out of a factory with very few or no defects. But as they travel, they get more and more defects because the goods weren't packaged properly. Uh, the transit, um, the, the requirements in transit weren't strict enough in terms of time or temperature. So there could be a number of ways that goods are damaged within transit. So it's real important to make sure, first of all, that the goods are packaged properly. So you might have what's called a pre-inspection, um, a pre-shipment inspection. So that means that the goods are not only inspected at origin, but uh, they're inspected as they're being loaded onto the truck that's going to go to that first carrier or to the first carrier. So you want to make sure that the goods are, are packaged properly, are braced and blocked properly for safe carriage. 
Um, so uh, within that is looking at how the goods are loaded, as well as the unloading of the goods uh, when those goods arrive. So um, that's part of making sure that the quality is maintained not only at the factory level and the pre-shipment level, but the loading and unloading level as well. If uh, you're an importer under a certain quality contract for uh, for your customer, then you want to make sure that you're not only checking things at the factory level, but checking it throughout the supply chain. And we've already talked about certain defect classifications. So you can have major, minor, and critical defects. And it's very important, especially if you're an importer who doesn't control the quality process in the factory, to make sure that you enforce quality as uh, the goods come out of the factory um, and these are the goods that you're going to purchase. Again, there are different AQL standards that you want to uh, that you want to look at. So shoes, clothing, um, you know, different lines of product may have different standards. So um, example of an AQL inspection, let's say that we have a lot of 2,000 items. Um, uh, it's very common to take 50 pieces uh, within that inspection. They'll inspect all 50 pieces. Now these are 50 pieces throughout the shipment. In other words, front, back, middle, side. Um, if two or less uh, are defective, then the, sh the entire shipment is accepted. But if eight or more are defective, then the entire shipment is rejected. If three to seven pieces are found, then they may take an additional 75 pieces uh, through random sampling and go through the same process again. So again, with the AQL inspection, it's based on statistical sampling of an entire shipment. Other standards to be aware of is CPSC. This is a Consumer Product Safety Commission. Uh, even though these are laws enforced inside the US, uh, it's especially critical if you're an importer or a foreign exporter to understand these rules to make sure that the products that you're shipping comply with these rules. Other standards out there is ISO. ISO is a process standard that identifies processes within an organization from purchasing to selling, sourcing. Uh, there are several different levels and standards of, I, uh, of ISO. Uh, but they're important to be familiar with. A lot of products, um, uh, ISO is a requirement. Um, for example, the aerospace industry heavily depends on the ISO for making sure that they're vetting their suppliers and, and partners properly. Another set of standards that's important to know about is the ICC, or Uniform Customs and Practices for Documentary Credits. These are industry standards, but these are industry standards that the banking industry relies on to describe what the practice is in documentary credits. In other words, how banks treat documentary credits like, um, like letters of credit, uh, documents against cash, uh, how, they, uh, how they interact with each other in facilitating transactions. So it's important to understand uh, the UCP. Uh, we're now on the version of UCP 600. Uh, 500 was the old version. But uh, it's a fairly short read, but it's important to understand um, the ICC um, uniform commercial practices, uh, especially if you're using letters of credit. Some shipping vendor quality standards. And again, you should uh, establish quality not only between buyer and seller, but with your supply chain. Things like pickup performance. Uh, if the goods are being picked up from the factory, what is the performance standard? Uh, when should those uh, goods be picked up? Uh, what do you do with late pickups? Uh, how do you treat that? What is your agreement with the carrier? On-time delivery, how is it calculated and how is performance determined um, throughout your truckers, your freight forwarders, and your logistics providers? Establish how claims are handled with the carriers that you use. What are the standards for claims? What can you get them to agree to or describe to you as their claims process? Invoicing accuracy. 
a lot of companies spend a lot of time and effort auditing freight invoices, whether it's from truckers, steamship lines, freight forwarders. So it's very important to be able to audit between um, the agreed on price from your logistics carriers and the invoicing that they give you. And in fact, there's a whole industry of companies that does nothing but just audit invoices for companies. So it's that important to make sure that they're accurate. Having an interactive uh, website, a lot of carriers will provide um, uh, websites that will have tracking information, um, that will even have uh, systems that you can set up to help you manage inventory, help you manage your supply chain. Uh, training is very important for, um, for your shipping vendors. Uh, making sure that they're trained in that they have their hazardous material training, that they understand your requirements as um, as a buyer or understanding requirements under the seller. Uh, managing customer accounts, um, your your shipping vendor should be able to describe to you how they're going to manage your account and who's going to manage it. Having centralized customer service. A lot of freight forwarders now have centralized customer service that can help you from end to end um, no matter what service you're using within that company. It's, quite, it's not unusual to have a relationship with the logistics companies where you're using their, uh, their consulting services, their trucking services, their intermodal, um, their air freight, their domestic services. So it's important to have a single point of contact to help coordinate all the services that you use. Having good communication and consistent communication uh, with your shipping vendors. Uh, demanding and setting standards for responsiveness. What, are the, what should be the response time um, for problems when they do occur?